Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Raiders is one of the most, if not the most popular character in Undertale. Papyrus is well known for his legendary antics and his peculiar obsessions with both spaghetti and humans. One thing most people agree on about him is that he isn't a particularly powerful enemy, and that makes sense considering that he's the second major boss within the game after Toriel. While we have no reason to believe he's anything special judging on the fight with him alone, can we infer that he's more than meets the eye based on his brother Sans and through the more obscure lore within the game? Well, let's find out. Papyrus is first met within Snowdin, where he doesn't exactly create the impression of being particularly powerful. In fact, the character we meet is arrogant and maybe a bit obnoxious, though also funny and a little immature. We repeatedly meet him throughout the forest, and he tries to stump us with some incredibly convoluted and slightly arbitrary puzzles. It turns out he never really had the intention of hurting us. All Papyrus wants to do is capture a human, to in turn impress Undyne and therefore be allowed into the Royal Guard. This isn't just what we're told, either. If Papyrus beats us despite being one of the easier bosses within the game, he'll trap us within his shack rather than killing us. The ironic part of this is that we can easily escape and fight him again. He's so soft that should we lose to him three times, he'll actually let us pass, even though that's not really what he should be doing. Regardless, seeing how he shows such commitment and obedience to following his orders, one has to wonder why Undyne doesn't let him become part of the guard. When talking to her, she explains that it's because he's too nice. She even realises that he's pretty tough. For example, compare him to the canine unit within Snowdin. He could probably beat any of them based on the difficulty of his fight, but they're part of the guards and he's not. Undyne, however, believes that Papyrus doesn't have the ability to be harsh when it's needed. As a guard, he'd need to be willing to fight and ready to go to extreme lengths should it be necessary. Already then there's a hint that Papyrus isn't as weak as we thought, because he'd really be so strong that he could rival even his brother Sans. Sans is an enigma throughout Undertale. Like Papyrus, we don't have much of a reason to believe that he's all that powerful. In fact, should we complete the entire game, we never fight him anyhow, so it'd be easy to assume he may even be weaker than his brother. However, on the genocide path, we finally do enough to earn Sans Wrath, and it turns out that he's quite possibly the most powerful monster in the entire underground. This is very strange considering his relation to Papyrus. Papyrus may be the younger brother, but how could Sans attain so much power seemingly without him knowing? Another question is why he doesn't intervene, should we end up killing Papyrus? Sure, he seems pretty angry about it, but though he's incredibly lazy, surely even Sans would find it within him to rush to the defence of his own brother. It doesn't make sense to say that he couldn't reach the fight in time, considering that we find him behind a counter in Waterfall, just a single screen on Onwards. and because we know he has all of his ambiguous shortcuts he can use to get anywhere he needs to be quickly. Could it be that Sans wasn't afraid for his brother's life? Did he perhaps believe that Papyrus is powerful enough to hold you off on his own without his assistance? Perhaps he did, but we still don't know why. Let's keep going. Throughout the game we learn about the biology of monsters, particularly from the Frogger in the Ruins, the Library in Snowdin, the Plax in Waterfall and from exploring the True Laboratory. Several important things we learn is that monsters don't really like to fight, and that all of them apparently have positive traits within their souls. Something humans apparently don't require. Another thing we learn about monsters is that they become weaker the crueler we are to them, and that should we attack them off guard, they'll take huge amounts of damage. This is proven to be true when playing Undertale, as our damage numbers increase throughout fights, and we can kill monsters in a single blow, should we wait to take them off guard? Who says that monsters don't do less damage then if they don't really want to harm their target? This is surely completely in line with everything we've learned so far about monster kind. It's also undoubtedly applicable to Papyrus. I think there's no denying that Papyrus is holding back when we fight him, specifically for two reasons. Firstly, he wants to capture us and not kill us, so if he has the power to destroy our soul, he wouldn't show it anyhow. Secondly, deep down, he has a heart of 
gold, and despite his eccentric personality, really all he wants to do is make friends and achieve his goals. He really wasn't looking to beat us when we fought him. Does that really mean he's secretly incredibly powerful though? There's a few reasons to believe he is. Firstly there's his special attack that he never gets to use. The annoying dog stole it from him just as he was about to unleash his full power. Many people speculate that this could have been one of the infamous gas blasters that we see Sans using. It's hard to imagine that Papyrus wouldn't be significantly more powerful if he had the assistance of the skull-shaped lasers. Another factor worth considering is that he reluctantly resorts to what he describes as a completely normal attack. However, this attack proves to be one of the more complex within the game, and is surprisingly dangerous coming from Papyrus. If this is his idea of a normal attack, then what do his dangerous attacks look like? Could they be in any way comparable to Sans lethality? We've little reason to believe otherwise. Papyrus shares his brother's mysterious origin, and is described as having simply strolled into Snowdin one day before asserting himself alongside Sans. Where did the two brothers come from exactly? While we have no indication of where Papyrus came from other than that he accompanied Sans, there are some peculiar implications as to where Sans may have came from. The biggest is surely the facts that we're judged by him within the hall before fighting Asgore. He acts almost like the king's last line of defence, and it's hard to deny that idea when we see the full extent of his power on the genocide path. Does this mean that Sans and Papyrus are almost like King Asgore's special service? It may sound kind of crazy, but consider this. They went to protect Snowdin as low-level sentries, but they seemingly came out of nowhere. It turns out that Papyrus is a far more competent fighter than anyone within the K9 unit, and Sans is arguably more powerful than anyone within the kingdom. It seems like the two brothers have a complex and mysterious past that we're never told about, and there's no doubting that Papyrus must know a few of the things his brother does. Should we manage to kill Sans, his last thought saw of Grillby's, proving he isn't completely detached from everything he does within Snowdin. The implication then is that both Sans and Papyrus are aware of what they're capable of, they just don't tell us or show us it unless it's necessary, such as within Sans' case. On the genocide route, Sans has every reason to be hateful and vengeful, with you having killed his brother and everyone he ever knew. Papyrus, meanwhile, remains innocent and naive, and he isn't aware of the full extent of your power. That could be why, instead of unleashing hell upon you, he tries to talk you out of your dark intentions, even to the very end. What if, however, we killed Sans before Papyrus? Something tells me we'd see a very different side to the skeleton, one who this time isn't going to try and hug you and let you pass, but instead wants you dead. Without his natural sense of empathy as a monster holding him back, perhaps he really could prove himself to be just as strong as his brother, especially if this time the annoying dog didn't intervene and take away his special attack. Remember that Undyne believes he's tough enough to be a royal guard, she just thinks he's too kind. But as we know that's a great weakness of monsters, imagine Papyrus without that undermining him. Instead however, when we fight Papyrus, he does his best to show us mercy. He's naturally inclined towards doing what's right, and that doesn't involve killing you. You may think the fact that he's desperate to impress Undyne cancels out the idea that he's more powerful than he seems. But how better to keep his cover as one of Asgore's most elite guardians than to act as if he's a complete rookie? The two brothers clearly know a lot that most monsters don't, especially Sans. He knows on the genocide route that we're destined to destroy the timeline. Papyrus may also be aware of such knowledge, and that's why on the evil path, he attempts the approach he does. He may know that fighting you is pointless, as you can just keep reloading until you beat him. Even Sans seems to know that it's a fruitless endeavour, and if anything he fights you just to spite you and to delay you as long as he can. Maybe Papyrus hoped to put you off for good by showing compassion towards you even when you decapitate him. I think one thing is certain, even if Papyrus isn't physically powerful, his willpower is as strong as anyone's within the underground. To keep trying to talk you out of your genocidal rampage, even after having been mortally wounded, shows tremendous courage from the monster. Not only that, but he's diligent and persistent, and for someone who at first seems like a fool, he's actually surprisingly brave and well-meaning. While his combat ability is up for debate, in terms of true inner strength, I think Papyrus is perhaps the strongest monster in the game, never once losing his cool when facing the murderous human and embodying the good nature that monsters are capable of. With that in mind, it's no surprise that Papyrus is a fan favourite. For all he is funny and entertaining, he's as heroic as Undyne just in his own little way. Just don't insult his cooking as that probably would provoke him to reveal his full strength. Well, I hope you found this insightful, and perhaps it shed a little light upon a part of Papyrus rarely talked about. For as much as he is a comic relief character, his very will is something quite unique within Undertale, and Papyrus seems to be completely committed to doing the right thing. Of course, wanting to capture you may seem like it isn't particularly brave of him, but you have to remember that most monsters are absolutely terrified of humans, and with good reason. What did you think? Is Papyrus physically stronger than he seems? Be sure to let me know if you agree in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Try not to get into a fight with a giant-sized Papyrus, and I'll see you next time.
Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my patrons, my head scientists Asgore and She, Cameron Vihill, Kay Jensen, Sophronius and Illumanti Gamer, and my underlab scientists Crystal Sleet, Nicholas Ducks, Armin Arla, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Yushio Coroni, Sarah Wydra and Emily Gatewood. Thanks to the generosity of every name you see here, this channel is able to keep going. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.